because he's in that team alongside Lucas de Grassi and he says I'm not as experienced as Lucas Lucas is an incredibly quick driver so I'm here to learn off him yeah we're going to see that up and down the paddock in different teams that the, the experienced guys are going to be teaching the younger drivers some stuff but younger drivers tend to adapt quicker too so there's going to be that constant to and fro in and um, we've got a really good mix of drivers in this field Sam Bird there one of the virgin drivers alongside Jaime Algashwari he looked uh, pretty quick in free practice one he set the third quickest time a woman at 42.9 which was a second close uh, second slower than our quickest time which was Lucas de Grassi who set a woman at 41.937 this is Hope in Tung the Team China cars and the Apt cars in a similarly liveried machines, especially now Apt have got uh, yellow at the back of their cars through a Brazilian sponsorship deal. But there's Hope Tung, the home hero here in China, and China Racing run by Stephen Liu. They've been a part of motorsport since 2004 when they first entered the A1 GP series. There is Jaime Algashwari, teammate to Sam Bird at Virgin Racing, a former British Formula 3 champion, the youngest ever Formula 1 racer, Jaime Algashwari, when he made his debut at the 2009 Hungarian Grand Prix. And again, he never quite got the brakes or was never quite prepared enough for the brakes he got in Formula 1. He was really young when he started, wasn't he? And that's something I think Verstappen's going to maybe see next year too. It's always a uh, very much a tightrope on how early you bring a driver up into F1. Experienced driver there, Takuma Sato, raced with the likes of Jordan and uh, BAR in former races over in the States in IndyCar. And out of the pits goes Stefan Sarazan with gusto as we go green here in Beijing for the second free practice session. The cars winding their way out onto the circuit. As we go through the session, we'll try and uh, explain to you which cars are which, which drivers are which, so we can start to get some sort of recognition up because it's the first time that we have seen them out on circuit properly. They did a shakedown yesterday, but they're all going to be out on track straight away because these last 30 minutes could be crucial as we look at Hoping Tunk. Yeah, one thing we're going to see here, though, is um, guys who will be on, on fast laps and not drivers who will be sort of going pretty slowly trying to conserve the energy of the battery. Um, so you've really got to watch for that, and traffic in, in practice particularly is going to be really, really heavy. So the cars head out onto the track. There's Catherine Legg in the Amlin Aguri car, and that is the team that originally began as Super Aguri, but uh, Amlin, a British insurance company, came on board, and they've renamed themselves, and that's Catherine Legg and Takuma Sato who are going to be driving that car, but at the top of the, at the, top of the, uh, the team, it's still Aguri Suzuki is the owner. We've still got Mark Preston and Peter McCool essentially running the operation. So it's very similar to the Super Aguri squad that ran in Formula One back in the mid 2000s. And Catherine Legg is one of our two female racers. There's the other Amelie Aguri car, Takuma Sato. Different helmet and also the yellow on the roll hoop is the way you can differentiate him from Catherine Legg when the cars head out onto the track. As we go on board now with Jaime Algashwari winding his way through one of the chicanes and let's have a little look as he sort of cruises round on his outlap this is up at turn six i think and this will then uh, take him out onto stadium road and this these are two chicanes now on this uh, on this back stretch he's up behind his teammate just watch this next bit here you're going to see the car gets a jump coming up here in a second just as they break for turn 10. watch how narrow it gets here on the exit this is quite something um, fairly long straight here and then breaking into turn 14 quicker corner than you think opens up quite nicely on exit for the longest straight of the track up to uh, the turn 16 chicane and here now coming through the final corner is Nick um, is uh, sorry it's uh, the dragon car of Jerome D'Ambrosio coming across the start finish line and he's going to be the first man to go across and set a proper lap time as he comes down into the first corner doesn't look like he's particularly high on the uh, on the power at the moment as he comes around now into turn two, the left-hander that takes him out on Tianchen West Road. Got the running clock watching him. The quickest time we saw so far uh, today was a one minute 41.9. What we're seeing is teams are using one car for uh, qualifying preparation and the other car for race preparation. And the difference when they're running full power is, is actually quite marked. Visually, we can actually, we will see it. And you, you hear it a little bit too, so uh, you, you, you will see that. It's quite, quite a difference. Um, one thing they're struggling with here too is actually differentiate. Where, where is the chicane? Because there's no marks, there's no uh, styrofoam blocks to, to show you where to go. So the guys are, are struggling a little bit to sort of pinpoint their breaking points and their turning points. 
Jerome D'Ambrosio heads now out, out into the, the thin section of circuit on the run between turn 13 and 14, where we then turn left off the National Stadium Road and on to Hu Jing Road, where the circuit starts to wind a little bit. It'll all be flat out, no problem, down towards uh, the Hui Chong chicane. But nevertheless, it's uh, quite a pleasing looking part of the circuit as they then come into the chicane which is a little wider on the exit than some of the others interesting to see if we haven't had anyone misjudge it just there so far but we've only had 45 minutes of running so far so it really is a challenge for these drivers to get up to speed just to clarify the different power settings they have in qualifying they'll have 200 which is equivalent to 270 brake horsepower but in the race they'll only have 150 kilowatts of power which is 200 brake horsepower and they can manage their settings in the race from 150 downwards. There will also be the fan boost, where the winners of the fan boost will get an extra five seconds uh, of an extra 30 kilowatts of power. So there's all sorts of different power mappings at play. But of course, in most forms of motorsport, in qualifying, the cars are quicker than uh, than in the race. Oh, of course, of course. And any any type of racing now is is about managing the. Uh, the power you have, whether that's fuel or whether, you know, in this case, uh, the, the battery power. So it's it's the same thing going on. It's just you know, they'll be uh, because this is all new. Um, we're going to be discussing it. I would say quite quite a lot more. On board we go with Hope in Tongue as he comes through the bus stop chicane. Now up towards turn 14, breaking for the left hander. Gets the car turned in. Really, you can hear the tyres working so much as they really hit the hit the curbs hard on the inside. He's breathing quite hard there already. Now down towards the Kui Chong chicane. Under braking, he's uh, well down on the quickest time so far, which has been set by Nick Heidfeld in the Venturi car, a 42.7, which is actually a pretty impressive time. That would have been in third quickest in the first free practice session. So, all big lock up on the front left from uh, Hope in Tongue. Just about deals with it. Just about. That was close <laughs> on the exit wall there. And now he's coming down towards the final corner. Car gets a little airborne there just before braking. Looks like someone has had a lock up there previous time around because there was an awful lot of uh, smoke going on. It looks as though it might have been Sebastian Buemi who locked up there before. But Hoping Tongue comes across the line to go fourth quickest to 145.002. Still Nick Heidfeld, the quickest man so far, a 42.779, eight tenths of a second slower than we saw in the first free practice session as Jaime Agashwari has come back into the pits. This is Lucas de Grassi out on circuit, ex Formula One racer. And he's making his way past Jano Trulli in the Trulli car. You see Trulli just doing what we were talking about earlier, just slowing down a little bit. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's going to have to be some give and take here with the drivers, otherwise we could end up uh, having some problems. So teammates getting into it this morning with the Andretti guys. Um, Charles Peak was uh, a little bit of a uh, dart without feathers in, in one lap there, <laughs> held up a bunch of guys. Degrassi coming down towards the left-hander of turn six. And they're out towards the bird's nest on the left-hand side. A yellow flag being waved because Buemi's in the barriers. And he's done the front left of the car there, hasn't he? It looks as though the front left wheel is damaged. So Sebastian Buemi has lost control of the car at that first chicane on the National Stadium Road. And he and hadn't really done a lap yet. Yeah, he'd done the fastest first sector of anyone, so he was obviously pushing. De Grassi has come across the line to set the fastest lap time we've had so far, uh, a 1 minute 41.676. But Sebastian Buemi, his session is over. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a big problem. In this car, anyway. Yeah, exactly. A big problem for them there. And they're going to be struggling to get that car ready for qualifying, but they'll, they'll have it fixed for the race. Uh, that, that was the thing that everybody was worried about, was just connecting with uh, those, those larger curbs and, uh, and having that, that shunt. Jean-Paul Drio and uh, the professor there, Alain Prost. Great to have him here. They're the two men that have combined to create the EDAMS racing team. Jean-Paul Drio bringing the, the DAMS element, the successful motorsport team, and... I suppose Alain Prost bringing the E element. But Can you uh, imagine having Alain Prost as, uh, there with you and the yeah. questions you could ask him and the, the, the experience and, and just the brilliance that he brings along to any team? It would be, it would be such, a, such an advantage. It was quite interesting, though, because talking to him yesterday, he said it's totally different to when he ran his Formula 1 team. Because Formula 1, he had experience, he knew the cars, he knew roughly what was going on, whereas here, he, he's not getting that involved technically. On, but it, it's much more of an overseeing role than a, than a team principal role. Yeah, I think in F1, he was always hampered by a lack of budget, wasn't he? His team. I think what he brings here is as much a mindset as anything, and that just that attention to detail that somebody like Jackie Stewart always brought, and just that that 
understanding of how to win and what it takes to win. And he can bring that to that, that whole team and the Dams team as well. And obviously in GP2 right now are, are just doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. Yep, leading the championship in G GP2 presently as we now go on board with Nico Prost. He is the son of Alain Prost and he's racing in the other Edams car. He pulls over to the left-hand side. Presumably we're going to see a car flash past in a moment. There we go. Looked like one of the Venturi cars going through on the way down towards the first chicane. Indeed it was, Stefan Sarazan. But it's Lucas de Grassi who set the fastest time. Are we seeing any improvements so far uh, in this, uh, or at the moment in this session, because we've still got double waved yellows out at the chicane on the National Stadium Road. And indeed Sarazan decided to just go straight across because there was marshals in the track. And Lucas was quicker than this, this session already than he was this morning. So that, that, uh, that shows how much progress has been made. You were saying before that on a street circuit it's good to sort of have a night's sleep and then come back and attack it fresh. Do you get any sort of element of that from an hour and a half? I would say not. I mean, maybe, a, maybe a little bit, but tiny percentages. It's, it's, it's going to require some adjustment. And drivers, uh, because it is just everything in one day, everything is cramped in. There is no time to really go away, think about it, and digest it. So uh, it's, uh, it'll keep them on their toes. Stefan Sarazan currently 10th quickest at the moment in the Venturi Cup. As he turns into the penultimate corner at turn 19, he's going to pass Bruno Senna, who's backing off and getting out of the way, and down towards the final corner at turn 20. Another quite a big jump there. And you, see, you can see all the time marks there from where we've had quite a few lockups so far going into that final corner. Of the ones we've seen, I think Sam Bird wins a lockup contest so far when he was passing the Truly car in free practice one. He had them both locked up for quite uh, quite a while there. Absolutely spectacular stuff from uh, Sam Bird as he went the inside of Yano Truly locked both of his front wheels as Bruno Senna comes across the line. And maybe he was backing off to get some space to push it but he's not running particularly strong because i suppose with the yellow flag out there there's no point in wasting your battery until you're getting some uh, some clear air no absolutely i think you'll just be sitting there waiting for that yellow flag to go away um, he was very quick in uh, in free practice one but just got uh, held up by Charles peak in the, the last corner there otherwise i think he would have been top of the the time sheet so, so expect some good things from him as we uh, as we keep going lucas degrassi we just saw there quickest man of anyone still for the app theme and apt are uh, very successful, particularly in the German Touring Car Championship, the, GT, uh, the DTM, five DTM titles for them in their history. And uh, they're another squad that, that when they joined Formula E, everyone sort of went, oh, wow, these are, these are some proper teams coming on board. And, well, here's another one that you know quite well. Yeah, exactly. From all over the world, some proper teams showing up. And uh, even the, you know, things like the Mahindra guys, you think, oh, well, you know, they're not, they don't have a massive racing pedigree, then you realize that the, the Carlin organization is in there. Um, and so the, from top to bottom, it's a, it's a grid full of, uh, of, of really world-class teams. Mahindra making their first uh, appearance in car racing. They have raced in motorbikes uh, since 2011. As Frank Montani climbs into his second car, and now it looks as though we, we should be cleared that uh, yellow flag. On the exit of turn six, yeah, the message has just gone away. We've got green flags on the timing screen, so the cars are free to push now. Out there on the circuit, currently 14th overall, but yet to set a particularly representative lap time. 49.2 is best, a 41.6 is the best for Lucas de Grassi as Bird now winds his way down Hooching Road. I'm expecting big things from Sam. I really am. I think he's going to do a good job in the, in the championship and uh, you know, in testing he was good, but he's, he's, he's pushing hard. Mercedes Formula One test driver for a few years. Sam Birdie was the GP2 runner-up last season to Fabio Lima, who's actually the reserve driver at Amnon Aguri. And it's great that these talented guys have got somewhere high profiles to go as well. I mean, a lot of them, uh, a lot of young drivers now are sort of moving to IndyCar because... Um, Formula One is so difficult to get into, but to have the likes of Sam Bird and D'Ambrosio and Buemi and all these guys who never, okay, some of them did some F1, but not quite to the level that perhaps their talent uh, deserved. Oh, there's definitely a bottleneck, isn't there, at the top of the sport, and it's, um, you know, drivers are continuing um, later into their careers now, so that bottleneck just increases, I would say, and a lot of great drivers are not getting the chances maybe they, they, they deserve. Sam Bird out through turn two, down the straight 
on uh, Tianchen West Road into turns three, four, and five as we watch Ho Pintung in the Team China garage looking to head out onto the circuit. There's his teammate, Nelson Piquet Jr. Another man with a lot of experience in Formula One, in NASCAR, in Rallycross, in GTs. Oh, it looks like the guys are using the, the, the regen to turn it in a little bit right at the end of the braking zone. It just the, it watched Nelson there just as he turned in. See him adjusting the steer. We're going to see a lot of that during the race, a lot of adjustment on the, uh, the, the power delivery and the regen. He comes towards the left-hander of turn six. Now let's have a look at his uh, telemetry that we get on board with. 3% of his battery, that's what uh, that particular element means. The speed in kilometers an hour is relatively self-explanatory as he comes down now towards the bus stop chicane. And you can see the brake uh, force he's putting in as well on the, the brake meter there on the inside. On the right-hand side, that, that tall tower is basically saying how much power he is using because they can change it from a 200 in qualifying all the way down to 150 all the way down to 110 if they really want but we're likely to see 150 130 during the race so he is currently using 140 kilowatts of power so he's at a sort of reasonable race pace you'll also see when he gets on the brakes the regen uh, light flashes up and you'll see the power in kilowatts which is currently saying 140 you'll see that go to negative and that's the power that is coming back into the car through the regenerative braking in the same way um, that the kinetic energy recovery system works in, in formula one it's recovering the energy from the brakes essentially so an awful lot going on there as he comes into the pits big difference from f1 cars or the, the world endurance championship cars is they have a, a system that automatically adjusts the brake balance when they're regenerating the power. This car, the Formula E car, doesn't have that. So um, there's a, a lot of compromise from the driver here when they're when they're regenerating or not with the with the brake balance. Really a critical adjustment for any driver. So um, yeah, we're going to see some interesting moments there. At the testing in Donington, as we look at Catherine Legg in the Amna Naguri car, who's managed to go out actually, which is good, and uh, already gone five or six seconds quicker than she managed this morning. So things looking a little more positive in the Amlin garage in this second free practice session. But at Donington, there wasn't, there weren't many parts on the circuit where you could use the regenerative braking. And so here, if you're using regen everywhere, does that sort of balance out the, the brake balance issues? You see what I mean? You're going to have the same feeling at every corner. Yeah, I would imagine a, a bit, yes. Um, you know, Donington, I think the Melbourne loop was probably the one they were getting a, a relative um, idea. What we've got here, though, is bumpy braking zones. We never had that um, at, at Donington, and that's the first time. Um, oh, Bruno was trying hard. Bruno Senna out on circuit in the Mahindra car. He passed his teammate, Prune Chandra, gave him a little thank you, and then got a little bit sideways on the exit of the Huey Chong chicane, now up towards turn 19. And he's looking pretty quick because he's done the fastest first and middle sectors of anyone in the Mahindra car, coming down towards the final corner now. This is what we saw this morning. Um, he definitely has a potential to be to be right up there. Here comes Bruno Senna then out of the final corner and across the line. Surely this is going to be the fastest lap we've seen so far in Formula E. A 1 minute 41.341 for Bruno Senna. He goes to the top of the timing screens. Three and a half tenths of a second quicker than Lucas Degrassi, his teammate, with 13 minutes to go. And Degrassi second, Heidfeld third, Piquet Jr. at the moment in fourth with Charles Pique fifth for Andretti. I mean, the, the time just goes so quickly. Yeah. You know, it's, we're halfway through the session just about here. And um, all right, over halfway now. And the guys are just, it's almost over. Oh, there we go. Daniel Ab having a wee moment. Yeah, front left lock up from him as he comes into the final corner. Uh, what sort of sector time has he done so far? He's done personal best, so he might jump up here. He does to third place at 42.172. Eight tenths down on Bruno Senna at the moment. The way qualifying works is it's divided into four groups because to have 20 cars on a street circuit is always a bit of a challenge so you'll have four groups of five cars going out at various points throughout the throughout the day and they'll only get one maybe two flying laps and so uh, really is getting towards the time where you need to get your qualifying plan honed but is qualifying as vital in Formula E on a street circuit as in other motorsport forms on a street circuit? Because we're expecting over Oh, there is going to be overtaken, but there's something to be said for starting up front anywhere, isn't there? And it'll hopefully keep you out of trouble too. Yeah. See Al Jashwari pushing pretty hard there. Yep, I'm Al Jashwari coming down towards the Huichong chicane. And he's currently 11th quickest. He's done a personal best 
in the first sector. He comes through the second split now and does another personal best. You can see he's a second down, though, on, on Bruno Senna's time. What we're seeing there, I think, obviously a massive difference in the times, as much as, you know, seven seconds generally uh, between the first guy and, and, and the, the driver in the 18th with Karun. That's because some are running race levels of, of power and some have got the wick turned right up for qualifying. So uh, yeah, we'll see it closing up a lot when everybody's on the, the same power level. I wonder, now Sebastian Buemi, well, let's watch Agro Suari across the line. Here he comes. It's going to be somewhere in the 42s, probably. A 42.601, so he goes fourth quickest. Sebastian Buemi, who we saw crash out of the session earlier on, he hasn't been able to get back out. And I wonder if he literally hasn't been able to get back from, from where he crashed out in the because access around the Olympic Park and a street oh. circuit is always a bit of a challenge. He might be lost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it, it can be very, very difficult to get to get around and there's fences everywhere. And yeah, and if he is, I imagine his frustration level is uh, is pegging right about now. There's a look at the standings then. Bruno Senna, the quickest man out there. Here's Oriol Servia in the Dragon Racing car coming up towards the penultimate corner at uh, turn 19. And that Dragon car in the hands of Servia is currently 11th. I love the fact that when they go on the power, they step out that instant torque and the general lack of grip of the Formula E car. You can really see them sliding around. It's, it's pretty cool. Across the line comes Servia. We're going to have an improvement from him. Uh, no, he remains down in 11th place, a 44-0 on that last lap, but he's lapping pretty consistently, so it suggests he's doing some sort of race run trial with 10 minutes to go. Are we going to see drivers hopping out and getting some qualifying trim cars, potentially, as Charles got... Peake gets out of his Andretti? If you're going to do it, time's... Now there's Michael Andretti standing over there, having a look at the monitor. Obviously a man who knows a lot about winning races. There is Charles Peake having a watch on as we go on board with Bruno Senna as he skips over the chicane and is a bit frustrated with Sam Bird. <laughs> he's very frustrated with Sam Bird there. Uh, presumably he took the chicane maybe to avoid Bird. It's, it, that is the thing, if you're going that slow, you're going to have to watch your mirrors. And uh, there's, there's definitely going to be a lot of frustration after this session. Should have to qual or during qualifying, it should calm down a bit with only five cars on the track at a time. Big advantage in qualifying is going to be going in that last group because the track is going to clean up, going to rubber in a little bit more. And there might only be one or two tenths of a second advantage, but you'll definitely take that. So big advantage to be in the last uh, last group in qualifying. There's Nick Heifert out there in the Venturi car. Venturi, as a car company, hold the world record for the fastest ever electric vehicle, hitting 307 miles an hour, which is no mean feat. So they've got a lot of EV experience. There is Sam Bird back in the pits and having a little chat to the uh, engineers can't quite make out what he's saying it's one of the advantages of formula e you can actually have a conversation with your engineer yeah. without using an intercom system yeah the engineers had to take the headset off his off his head so he can hear sam talking to him nelson pk jr has been asked to report immediately to race control so the brazilian has uh -oh been up to something out there as Charles Peak is now getting strapped into his second Andretti machine to head out onto the track once more as we see Catherine Legg turning into the left-hander at turn 19 and she's got Takuma Sato and Inaguri cars running line astern on the circuit although Sato looks like he might be coming into the pits Leg comes into the final corner and she's got a lot of uh, a reasonable amount of catch-up to do because she only managed 12 laps in the first free practice session this morning, whereas the likes of your Degrassi's and your Nico Prost of this world managed 19. So a little bit behind in terms of getting to know the circuit. But she's done a reasonable amount of running so far. Currently 15th overall of 46.1 and uh, seven laps completed. And then when you think of that, she's going to be going into qualifying with. 14 laps under her belt or you know and and she hasn't had it it's not been a disastrous more well, Buemi for example he did uh, 18 laps today shunted in this second free practice session so he's going to go into qualifying having been around the circuit 18 times it's not very much well it's not it's not but for for a driver you're going to after about five laps or something you should be getting pretty close and then the, then the, the margins start coming down and the gains are smaller and smaller but um the, every lap at this point is is key and so and Boemi will be uh, will be shaking his head as I'm sure his bosses will too. These cars all electric with a batteries supplied by Williams Grand Prix Engineering. The powertrain 
is a development of the McLaren powertrain that they use in their P1 sports car. Across the line comes Michaela Ciruti then. Currently, well, 15th place. She's just jumped up with a 145.489. Four seconds slower than Bruno Senna at the top, but again, she's no doubt running a, a more race orientated simulation at the moment in that Trulli car. Or possibly not. She just backed off there. Um, all will be revealed, I'm sure, come qualifying because they're all going to have the, the wick turned up, aren't they? Yeah. It's going to be very an entertaining qualifying session as we see. Nick Heidfeld turning into the chicane in the Venturi car again. Out through three, four, and five. Then up towards six, the 90-degree left-hander that takes the road and onto the National Stadium road. He's got Bruno Senna that he's closing in on, and Bruno Senna decides to just go straight across at the chicane so he can get out of the way of Heidfeld a little easier. Yeah, I mean, that was Bruno paying attention there, wasn't it? And uh, Some of the guy drivers are doing it, some aren't. And um, I think the more races we do, the more everybody will get used to that kind of that situation down towards 14 for Nick Heidfeld. Out now onto uh, Hu Jing Road. Currently eighth quickest Nick Heidfeld. Slower than Bruno Senna. His first sector has been uh, all right, not particularly uh, outstanding. The second sector, again, not superb. And uh, <laughs> got very close to the exit of the uh, exit of the chicane there. He might have overcooked the entry just a wee bit. And that's what's going to happen as the confidence builds. You're going to think, oh, I just take a little bit more on the brakes, come off the brakes a little earlier. And uh, yeah, that's going to happen. So um, there in, there's an interesting quandary there because normally with a normal car, you would try and get off the brakes and run the speed in the corner, maybe lift on the straight to save fuel and run that speed in that first section. With this, you've got to brake because you've got to use the regen to, yeah. to regenerate the system. So um, it's going to be a different technique of, uh, of saving and of, of saving power and, and how you will drive that. Uh, that. That will be interesting as we see the Venturi squad in the uh, temporary pit lane garages that are coming to all of the formulary races around the world as Hopin Tung gets very feisty and very in the barriers. Oh dear. And that, I think, is uh, at turn 19. We'll wait and see, but Hopin Tung has found his time in the Armco barriers at turn 19. And well, we saw him locking up, and there's just no margin for error around here, is there? No, a typical street course, there really isn't. We're going to see that all through the Formula E Championship, just no margin. And he, he locked up a little bit. Um, and I'll just, I'll just turn in anywhere, whether he's so out of control by the time he turns in. Um, I don't know, but uh, the result's the same, and uh, it's going to take a bit of work to fix that car. So let's have a look at this. Down towards 19, Hope and Tunk. The red flag has come out and just locks the inside front left. And he's nowhere near the apex. And he just see, it looked like he sort of just tried to... I think he was so out of control. I yeah. don't think he could slow it down, unfortunately for him. I just think, yeah, once, once that locked up, he was already on the limit. And uh, there you see the result. And that's probably going to be the end of the session, unfortunately. Yeah, quite possibly. The red flag has been thrown. The session will not restart. So that is the end of free practice two here in the FIA Formula E Championship. And uh, well, hoping Tunga just, it wasn't that last lap, but he did, was third quickest overall with a, a one minute 41.824. So looking quick, hoping Tung, until he ended up in the wall. But it's this man who was quickest of anyone, Bruno Senna, a one minute 41.341 in the Mahindra. And Senna and Degrassi, the top two after free practice two, but you know, the likes of, they're the top two, the bottom two, Sam Bird and Sebastian Buemi. So not a particularly representative session. It looked like Sam Bird just did quite slow race runs. That's because he did 11 laps out there. Hey, he did plenty of laps and he was so quick this morning and just looked consistently fast. So, and obviously Buemi went off on the, on the out lap. So I expect those two to be up there fighting for the pole position this afternoon. Hope in tongue. Watching on as everyone has to drive back to the pit lane at the end of this session after he's put it in the Armco barrier on the exit of turn 19. And the Chinese fans will no doubt be disappointed with that. He'll still uh, get to go out in the qualifying session because he has two cars, so time is now of the essence for the Team China squad. Get that car prepared for the race coming up later on today, starting at 4 o'clock. The race will start as Nelson Piquet Jr., his teammate, is pushed back into the pit lane and PK Jr. finished that session in 10th place so third and 10th for Team China I think they'll be pretty pleased with that 
but Hoping Tongue won't be very pleased with that. As he looks to get out and inspect the damage. Depends whether he's... It's difficult to see whether he's actually hit the Armco or whether he's gone more into the, the Tech Pro crash structure. Yeah, I think either way, it's going to have crunched the, one of the corners. Certainly the right front's probably taken, taken a hit. Um, front wing. But uh, yeah, I mean that they can fix it quickly. It's, it's, as long as it's not got back into the floor and stuff like that, it'll be a, a, a fairly easy fix. It's not, maybe not nice to say that the mechanics are probably <laughs> go, going to help them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like they probably said, I'd like to see you fix it quickly. <laughs> <laughs> as I say, I, I, I break the cars, not uh, don't normally fix them. <laughs> Bruno Senna pushed back into the pit lane. Then the quickest man of anyone so far in this free practice session and in Formula E in Beijing. A one minute forty one. 0.341, there's Oriol Serviet. Talking to Tom Brown, used to work with Penske back in the day, a long, a good Scotsman. Been in America for a long, long time though. Dragon Racing, uh, saw D'Ambrosio finish eighth quickest, and Servia down in the 15th position. So they just having a chat with the engineers and uh, it looks like they're talking about the the braking and the sort of instability yeah he sounds like he's talking about a locking on the rears a little bit when he's uh you know when he's getting using the regen paddle so they probably make a small adjustment to that and um, the thing with the regen paddle you have no adjustment it's either pretty much on or off there's it's it's not a a, a very uh, adjustable <laughs> thing and um so they're, they're going to have to uh, make the changes back in the uh, with the computer. Bruno Senna, the quickest man. 1.341 at the end of free practice two here in Beijing. Second quickest, Lucas de Grassi, three and a half tenths of a second behind with Hope in Tongue for Team China racing third, which will give him and the Chinese fans no doubt some encouragement heading towards qualifying. Frank Montani, fourth quickest for Andretti with fifth place, the second apt car of Daniel Apt. Sixth place for Jarno Trulli and seventh place going the way of Jaime Algashwari with Jerome D'Ambrosio in eighth position, ninth for uh, Nick Heidfeld and tenth for Nelson Piquet Jr. Charles Peake finishing in 11th with Nico Prost down in 12th spot, 13th for Karun Chanduk, uh, Stefan Sarazan 14th, Oriol Servia, 15th Michaela Chiruti in 16th place, the two Amelie Naguri cars, 17th and 18th, Catherine Legend to Kumasato, Sam Bird was out there, did some laps, but only finished down in 19th place. Sebastian Buemi hit the wall on his first flying lap out there, and he finishes down in 20th in the classifications. So that concludes free practice two here in Beijing. Next up is qualifying, which is you know, pretty much a, a, a one-lap qualifying session, and you find some drivers can deal with that, some drivers struggle a little bit. Do you think we'll get one or two? Do you think we'll manage a second? Well, we'll need to speak to the teams after this. That's going to be the key, but uh, that's certainly something that they would have been looking into. At, at Donington Park, when they simulated uh, the qualifying session based on the... They could only get one in, sort of one and a half. So here, a shorter circuit, less hills, less sort of medium speed corners. More, more regen. More regen. They might be able to get two in. We'll have to wait and see as Hope and Tongue gets a, a lift back after finishing third in that session on the back of a moped. Still, that's good pace from, from Hope in the 2007 German Formula 3 champion. Very good. Only so less than half a second off Bruno Senna. It's closing up at the front, isn't it? I mean, how many different teams are on the front? I, I, I was thinking, I think it's eight of the top nine are different teams, but I might be wrong. That was just off the top of my head, but it's very, very competitive up there at the top of the order. And... Uh, it was Bruno Senna in the Mahindra car who managed to come out on top. Top four covered by eight tenths of a second, but I think that'll get closer and closer as the session progresses. They're just putting the barriers back in place from where Sebastian Buemi had his moment right at the start of this session. So Bruno Senna, the quickest man of anyone in this second free practice. We can hear from him now. He's with Nicky Shields. With Bruno Senna wearing a very attractive hat, but uh, fastest in P2. Yeah, not bad. Uh, in the P1, we had the pace to go fastest as well. Uh, just uh, as everybody saw on the onboards, I had a bit of traffic on the last corner. But uh, yeah, P2 was also difficult to traffic. We managed to get uh, one clear lap in. Then after that, there was always a bit of traffic. Um, but uh, the car is. The track is very tricky, so easy to make mistakes. So I'm sure everybody's keeping that few percent left uh, to the end to qualifying but I have different things and I tried 
few experiences, some, someone went wrong, someone right, and uh, that time is there. So hopefully qualifying can be there as well. As you say, it's a very busy track. Are you going to be looking for some space during qualifying? Yeah, fortunately qualifying, we have uh, less cars on the track, which will make it, make it easier, but uh, you never know what's going to happen. So you need to make sure that you put a banker lap in uh, early on and try to do it again. But uh, if you don't get any laps in, you're going to be in trouble. Great. Thanks, Bruno. Bruno Senna, who enjoyed a, a day out with Karun on the Great Wall of China on Wednesday, picked up hat as well. Might have been Thursday, actually, but uh, they went tobogganing down. It was, and, uh, I don't know who won that race, actually. That'll be interesting to, to find out. We can now hear from uh, Jaime Algashwari, the seventh overall. He's with Nicky. Jaime, you finished seventh in practice two. Looking good for qualifying. Yeah, we're testing loads of things, really. We don't have much track time, so we're trying to understand how's the car going to be on the race. Then we tried a few laps in qualifying, but they were not enough. So I think we do have a good basis, but it's just a, everything is a question mark. At the moment, our target is to finish the race, to understand and to see how the car is behaving during this race, especially energy management, and then we will head to the next race. But at the moment, it's to finish. Thanks. Good luck, Jaime. A lot of the teams and drivers have been saying out this weekend, oh, we just don't know. We just don't know what's going to happen. And, and you know, I get that a lot when I interview, you know, teams and drivers. They say, oh, yeah, we don't know. Usually they're lying, but you get the impression this weekend that actually there is a big unknown coming up. Yeah, of course there is. It's all new, isn't it? It's, it that, and that is new for the, the cars new, the concepts new, the tracks new, it, and everybody is just is just learning as they, as they go. And so when they actually say we just want to finish, there is a certain degree of that. And then when they look like they're going to finish, they're going to want to win, obviously. A couple of uh, fans for Trulli we just saw. Then we've got uh, a Sam Bird fans and Nick Heidfeld fans and Brazilian fans. So great to see so many people here just for the second free practice session. You can see how, I mean, we're in proper downtown Beijing, so it gets very, very busy. Uh, we can now hear from uh, Alain Prost from the EDAMS team. He's in the pits with Nikki. I'm here with uh, co-founder of EDAMS team, Alain Prost. Uh, Alain, Sebastian Buemi, he's uh, damaged his heart. Can you just explain to us what actually happened out on track? Well, very simple. I don't know exactly. I think it um, went a little bit over the curb. It was uh, pushing quite hard and... Uh, set up the best time in the first partial time. He already had a little crash this morning, so he's really, really, uh, really uh, hot on this track, but uh, it's part of the game. But on the other side, we can see, uh, you know, on only one day of uh, practicing, how difficult it is if you have a, a problem like this. It's, I hope it's not going to be too, uh, too bad for the car. We can still repair it. Uh, we still use one car for qualifying, and we be, should be okay for the rest. Uh, this afternoon, but it's really uh, pretty marginal, and we have a little problem on this Nicolas car on the battery or something. So we can see that it's, uh, it's very fragile. You know, everything goes. You have to avoid all the problems. There's not much room for error on these exactly. street circuits. Do you think they've had enough time to practice ahead of qualifying? It would be the same for everybody. I think uh, it's, that's why it was very important to do the maximum mileage, but. Uh, that's part of the game, you know. We, we, we knew that it would be difficult on a track like this. Uh, we, we know that's going to be marginal also for qualifying and for the rest because we can see a lot of uh, mistakes and errors again. And uh, we hope that uh, the, the rest will be okay because it's the first one and we, we all hope that it's going to be better. But it's also good to see the drivers, you know, pushing hard and uh, everybody is saying that it's quite nice to watch. Uh, from outside, you know, locking the wheels, and uh, the car is moving, and uh, they are not disappointed at all, at all by the by the noise, and uh, that is a positive point. Well, the eyes are certainly on this race. Good luck, thank you. The great thing about Alan Prost is, you know, I've seen, you know, you see hundreds of interviews with him down the years when he was team principal of F1, and but he really seems to be enjoying himself. You know what I mean? He really seems to be happy, and he's smiling, talking to Nicky. It's it's great to see him 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 and his team performing so strongly here at uh, Beijing at the first round of the FIA Formula E Championship. We've just finished three minutes. Look back. It's about to get underway. Takuma Sato was the man. Sith sat in the uh, Amninaguri garage. He and Catherine Legg, the two drivers, Daniel App 
getting set uh, out in the end finish go very quick third quickest overall but the session wouldn't end exactly how he would have wanted